Hello everyone, welcome to Switch Up. Today we've got another review for you, and sorry this one's taken a little while to get out to you. This is our review of Super Mario 3D All-Stars. This was written by a good friend of the channel, Jace Glover, so thank you very much to you, Jace. While updating and re-releasing old games on current generation consoles isn't a new concept, the amount of these kinds of releases in the last couple of years makes it clear that we are living in an age of nostalgia. As a business decision it makes sense, the games require minimal work to update and are selling like hot cakes, even when some of them are priced at full value. Some of these, such as Link's Awakening, receive the full remake treatment and look and feel like a new game because of it. Others, on the other hand, don't get quite so much done to them, perhaps a resolution upscale or a few minor tweaks here and there. Super Mario 3D All-Stars is Nintendo's latest effort to satisfy our nostalgic desires. But does it hit the mark? Well, thank you to Nintendo for the review code, and now, let's find out. Super Mario 3D All-Stars includes three classic Mario games, Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine and Super Mario Galaxy. From a story perspective, anyone who has ever played just about any Mario game will be familiar with the general premise. In 64, Bowser has stolen the Power Stars and is using them to take over Princess Peach's castle. In Super Mario Sunshine, the gang take a vacation trip to Isle Delfino, which immediately goes awry when a Mario lookalike trashes the island and Mario himself gets blamed and tasked with cleaning up the mess. Galaxy sees Bowser again causing trouble as he finds a cosmic power star and uses it to create his own galaxy, of course kidnapping Princess Peach in the process. The gameplay in all three games revolves around Mario collecting stars to ultimately restore order to the land. You start in a semi-open world hub with multiple branching paths and separate locations to teleport to. In 64, the hub is Peach's castle. The wall paintings throughout the castle represent the portals to other parts of the world where Mario can collect stars. Sunshine places you in the port of Delfino and the portals are magic graffiti, whilst Galaxy sees Mario on a space station of sorts where the portals are buildings called observatories. At first, players only have access to the hub and one other area, but as you collect more and more stars, the options open up, giving the player a lot of choice as to how to progress. Whilst there are a fair number of stars within each area, meaning you will revisit that area a number of times, What's nice is that each area is different enough from each other, not just across games but within a game itself, but also each task that you are given within an area to get the particular stars is also very different to the next, and we'll see you doing things such as fighting bosses, collecting a certain number of coins, or even racing against characters. There are also times when a particular power-up will be needed, and these again will just change the gameplay up to an extent. Mario has his typical assortment of tricks such as high and long jumps and his famous triple jump, but in true Nintendo fashion, each game tweaks the formula just a bit. Being the original 3D Mario title, 64 of course also has the most basic moveset. Aside from jump attacks, Mario can also dive at enemies to take them out. Galaxy is actually very similar, with the dive attack instead being replaced by a spin, and Sunshine is the most unique of the three as Mario is given a water tank called Flood. Flood allows you to shoot water like a fire hose or use it as a temporary jetpack to cross large gaps. The trade-off for gaining these abilities is that Mario doesn't have his long jump or the ability to crouch. It's funny, playing through all of these games at the same time does make it quite noticeable just how different Sunshine's moveset is, and for this reason its controls take the longest to get used to. The gameplay on all three titles is of course very similar, but if there's one thing Nintendo does do extremely well, it's building upon solid mechanics to further improve the gameplay, doing enough to make the experience feel fresh and fun. With this in mind, I strongly suggest playing the three games in order of original release. Whilst all three games do control decently to this day, Nintendo did unfortunately decide to take the easy route and release the games via emulation. What this means is that the games are just about the same as they were when they were released, including outdated mechanics that developers have since improved upon. The most obvious example of this is the camera in Super Mario 64. Nintendo gets credit for being the first to allow players to control the camera angle back in 1996, however the way it works feels clunky these days compared to modern standards. You can't control a full 360 degree camera and instead you can choose between a few set angles and many times you'll find yourself fighting the camera unable to properly see what it is you're trying to do. By the time Sunshine had released, they had mostly corrected this problem and the camera in that game is much more fluid, making it all the more disappointing that Nintendo didn't do more to update the camera in 64. Likewise, it's also disappointing that motion controls weren't added to aim the water spray in Sunshine. 
Speaking of motion controls, it's worth noting that Galaxy requires their use while docked and either motion or the touchscreen while playing in handheld. With that being the case, this is one of the rare titles I've come across that doesn't translate well to playing in handheld mode. Don't get me wrong, the game still controls just fine and the mechanics work as intended. The problem lies with needing to use the touchscreen, which also requires you to take one of your hands off of the standard controls. This is actually the only game I can think of where I would suggest playing docked with two separate Joy-Cons instead of the Pro Controller for the best experience, as even when playing with the Pro Controller, you will sometimes lose your cursor when having to use motion controls and even simple things like trying to save the game can become a bit laborious. All three games provide stellar 3D platforming and incredible level design, especially Galaxy, and the core gameplay of all of the games holds up incredibly well to this day. For that reason, gameplay scores 18 out of 20. The controls are where some additional improvements were most certainly needed, especially that camera in Super Mario 64, and whilst it is disappointing, they don't completely hinder what is still a great experience, and they score 14 out of 20. The visuals are probably the biggest area of concern for this collection. Releasing them via emulation did little service to the graphical fidelity of the games. Whilst the resolution has been upscaled, both Super Mario 64 and Sunshine suffer from muddy textures, jagged edges and low draw distance. Now I'm no developer so I could be wrong when I say this, but I really feel like it wouldn't have taken a lot of additional work to clean up these issues. Much like my comments on the gameplay, the lower quality visuals doesn't ultimately detract from the fun to be had, however they certainly don't enhance the experience either, and it's again a disappointment that Nintendo didn't increase the effort and take as much pride in this re-release as they did with Link's Awakening. On a positive note, Galaxy was a great looking game back then when it released and still looks really good to this day. Whilst it's not quite as crisp and vibrant as say Mario Odyssey for example, to my eye it's not terribly far off. Pretty impressive for a 13 year old game. Contrary to the visuals, the audio is a standout of the whole package. Not necessarily because they did a lot to add to the original games, but because they've included all three soundtracks available from the title screen. Mario games have always had fun, well-designed soundtracks, and having four hours of content available to me whenever I want is, quite literally, music to my ears. It's worth mentioning too that this is the first time ever that the soundtrack of Sunshine has been released in its entirety. It's also lovely to see just how different each soundtrack is, going from the whimsical Mario 64 to the tropical Sunshine and then the quite sublime orchestral music of Galaxy really does highlight the audio journey Mario took over the course of those few games. Whilst a complete graphical overhaul wasn't necessarily needed, the visuals do look their age in a couple of the games and a bit more time and care of such a classic and valued franchise would have been appreciated from Nintendo in this case and they score 13 out of 20. Audio on the other hand is the absolute standout of the package and just goes to show how good music doesn't age over the years, if anything it gets better like a fine wine, it scores the full 20 out of 20. Super Mario 3D All-Stars is, not surprisingly, priced at full AAA value. That's £49.99, $59 or €59.99 or $79 Australian dollars 95. This is also, let's not forget, a limited release, both physically and digitally. When you take into account the quality of the free games included, it's hard to deny the value, especially for anyone who missed these titles back when they originally released. All three games have that signature Nintendo quality and charm that the Mario series is known for, and it's especially exciting to see Sunshine get a second lease of life. Now had Nintendo put maximum effort into updating these, it wouldn't even be a discussion whether the collection is worth the price or not, but as far as I'm concerned, not updating the camera controls is a massive negative against this collection. You know what it's like though, Nintendo and nostalgia are a dangerous combination, and I'm sure many people will feel that when it comes to picking this up. Value scores, 16 out of 20. To conclude, Super Mario 3D All-Stars is a collection of three fantastic games, not necessarily a fantastic collection if that makes sense. The classic Mario gameplay is as fun as ever, holding up incredibly well across all three games, plus Sunshine is a game that's quite difficult to come across these days in its original form. The music is absolutely top notch and the graphics are a nice walk down memory lane, even though more could have been done just to polish up the first two titles at least. And this here is the biggest problem with the package, that let's be honest, Nintendo have been a bit lazy and it's a shame that they have decided to celebrate the 35th anniversary of a classic game, Super Mario Brothers, with a collection that doesn't give Mario the love and respect that the fans certainly adorn on him.
Super Mario 3D All-Stars gets a switch up score of 81%. A huge thank you to Jace for writing this one for us. Please do remember to give this video a like if you like what you've just seen. If you love Mario, you'll love this game, let's be honest, but you'll buy it knowing that Nintendo didn't really get out of second gear when putting it together. Anyway, a quick thank you to our Patreons, as always, for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, stay safe, and until next time, happy gaming. Thank <laughs> you.